Hello, Internet, and welcome to... Well... We aren't game theory. <laughs> uh, but I would be absolutely disappointed in myself in the future if I didn't take this moment to recognize just one of the absolute hallmarks of YouTube. This is a platform that I've been uh, watching for as long as I can remember. And for as long as I can remember, the game theorists have been a part of that platform. <laughs> Uh, Matt Pat has been a part of that platform. He's been as I've got to talk about it. Like I didn't necessarily watch every single video game that Matt Pat ever did any uh, any theories about. And since the inception of the multiple channels that they've been working on, the other components of the theorists. You know, I've... I was around and, and, and active and, and paying attention when, when they started film theory, when, when, they, when they began expanding. I wasn't like constantly around. Even so, I absolutely knew who MatPat was. who the game theorists were. And while the horror genre of video games didn't always appeal to me personally, um, I would find myself constantly going back and just binge watching their content. Like, like I'd be, I'd be gone for a while and then, and then I would just be like all in a hundred percent. So, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for everything that you did. Thank you for the, the attitude that you came to this channel with. And thank you for being a true inspiration. You have, you have absolutely paved the way for other YouTubers to thrive. And, and that includes me. But what it's got me thinking about is legacy. You know, in the end, you start thinking about the beginning. And I think in the beginning, it would be wise to think about the end. To think about the 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 trajectory i mean it, it's absolutely good to live in the moment i'm a i'm an in the moment kind of guy focusing on the moment and probably would would not would not get i probably would not think about the end of of all of this but with, with these recent events how can i not so to me in the future i hope that we had just the best ride with this possible I hope that we had fun. I hope that it changed us. I hope that we changed it. And I can't wait to see everything that you do. I'm in good hands. So with that in mind, roll the intro. Hello future and welcome back to the sub Minecraft Let's Play. Today we're picking up where we left off in Minecraft 1.8. I am your host, KC Fly. Let's play some Minecraft. We left off uh, in, in, in the last few episodes, we, 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 completed, we completed one of our goals. We went on an adventure and that adventure, uh, we gathered a bunch of resources, but it did 
it did it did take us like three episodes to get all the way through it and uh today i i want to I, I, i've come up with a new task it's it's similar to one of the other tasks we had the enchant building right it's similar in that it will deal with enchanting uh, but this will be our first enchanting area that we are going to set up in the basement of the birch house you remember the basement the basement uh looks terrible <laughs> it literally just looks like a hole in the ground um but in our last in our last three episodes in the first episode we did get our hands on a bunch of leather and while we were out adventuring i think in our third episode we got uh we picked up some diamonds and a bunch of obsidian enough obsidian for one enchanting table and a nether setup between that and and, and everything else that we got while we were out on our adventures uh we are going to spruce up or should i say dark oak up our house a little bit but we are we are definitely going to be working on that basement so i've been brainstorming a little bit and i have a vision a future site if you will of of some modifications i want to make to our home here why don't you come with me and let's take a look at that vision that i have so this is my vision for some of the modifications i want to make to our house i want to add on a chimney and i want to make it somewhat functional um right dress up the outside a little bit give ourselves a little bit of a rare ish uh flower garden Moving inside, I want to drop the roof down a little bit. And here's what I'm talking about as far as functionality. I want to be able to throw in some furnaces behind it and be doing all of our cooking behind it. I'm going to dress up our uh, front area a little bit. We'll still have access to a furnace, but we'll also have a cauldron and we'll have our crafting table and eventually, uh, eventually we'll add some other things. We have a bit more storage on the wall behind us, but most of the stuff honestly is happening downstairs. We're going to be remodeling downstairs drastically. And this is kind of the vision that I have for it. It's a little bit... It's a little bit darker, but it does have pops of color. It does have a little bit of functional seating. It has a like a fish tank without fish currently. I gotta figure that out uh, over there. And our enchanting setup will be right over here in this corner. This is kind of what I'm going for. Got a little bit more storage in here for things. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's see here. I have a, a list of resources that I need for, for, for our project, for our, our, our home makeover, uh, if you will. I have a list of resources that I need. And one of those resources are some sheep. So I think the first thing we need to do real quick is I need to go out and get some sheep and then... I'm going to show you a trick or, you know, you probably know this trick being that you're from, you're from the future and everything, you know, but, but I'm going to be making use of a, of a well-known trick to kind of, uh, make our resources go as far as possible. So let me go grab some sheep. So we were able to wrangle up some sheep and a, apparently a spider. <laughs> um... And this brings us to to kind of my my near future plans here. I I definitely want to to do this. We're going to be setting up our first enchantment area in the basement. Um, we're going to be making some modifications to the house. But to get there, there's 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 a few there's several steps that we have to do first. There's several tasks. 
We've already gone on an adventure, and going on another adventure specifically to find a mine shaft is something that we're gonna want to do in the near future for all that for all that cobweb. Um, but for now, I think we really need to do something different uh, with this whole animal situation. Keeping them divided in pens like this is fine, um, but it, it doesn't it doesn't feel like home. It feels like starter farms, which is exactly what they were, so it's it's succeeding completely on that front. Um, yeah, so so that's what we're going to tackle first, is, is maybe doing something about the whole animal situation. So I started off thinking that maybe we were going to take our animals and we were going to like build the barn over here and, and then move out that way, but I remembered that we set these markers in place Granted, these markers were like the boundary lines for like our um, our property over here, which was where we were going to build, you know, just these kinds of starter farms um, to get us going. But like, I think instead of, of moving that way, because that moves closer to zero, zero or the zero axis of the world. Um, I think we're gonna move this way. So my plan right now is to build the barn starting roughly right here with the entire barnyard behind it and we'll level the land out as we need to. So here is me getting started on that. Deforestation comes first. So now that we've skimmed down the layers of the terrain a little bit, uh, we're going to be filling in this this huge crevice off to the side here with a lot of the dirt that we just that we just picked up. But just trying to like as as we brought this all down, we're trying we're trying to bring this up to match it. So that gives us an idea of the height that we're bringing it to, we're, basi we're basically bringing it up to this level. We will fill this in completely with dirt because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not one for cutting corners. Um, but then we're also going to be sort of tapering it off and uh, cutting down and replanting trees to make it look more natural, throwing the rose bushes back, that kind of thing. Uh, but first we need to sleep. All right, so here's the rough shape of what I think we're going to be looking at for our barnyard area. We will have six, maybe eight, uh, pastures, uh, fenced in a little bit. They're a little more narrow than maybe I wanted, but the, I could make them a little bit wider. The The goal was that, that all of the, all of the pastures feed into stalls that will be in the barn. Like you'll be able to see, uh, some of the animals when they choose to come inside. Um, but either way, we do not currently have, uh, the resources for a, you know, a, a typical barn design. I'm thinking like, like red and white, um, so we're gonna have to do something probably out of stone because we have a ton of stone from the cobblestone generator um i don't really want to make it out of birch but we could make it out of birch maybe some combination of the two it'll definitely look like a very unique barn so i'm gonna finish up uh the, getting these pastures fenced off right um we have them um, 10 wide by by roughly 20 long and then we're going to move our animals over here and then we're going to start working with our sheep so we can get the wool that we need to build the barn so that's the plan so then this is kind of what i'm imagining uh for the for this for the for, you know for the stalls inside the barn um Minus the fact that 
these will kind of be torn down and given something like that so the animals can see each other and, and we can see the animals um, might have might have this open I'm not sure yet um, gotta get that figured out though before I put the animals in here so this is this is loosely inspired by uh, my fiance's family have a farm and they and their barn has a similar has a similar thing where, where animals from multiple pastures can come in and that's where the feeding and the milking and, and that kind of stuff happens. This is loosely based on that. Um, it's not an exact one for one, but there we go. Give us some more fences. Let me like, throw that down. At least for now. At least for now. The idea is that apart from the. Uh, the the beams that are actually holding the doorways in place um which might also be changed out eventually for you know for fences as well um the idea is that we can see what animals are in there right because hopefully they will they will have been uh drawn into Um, drawn into their stalls. And then we'll have kind of an eye line on um, what animals are where. Or, you know, if we need to run in somewhere and, and grab something, or, you know, that it would be as visible as possible. That's the idea. Something like this. Yeah, so I think I think um, I just moved this over, uh, but I think this is roughly something I'm happy with. Um, we'll throw down some. Uh... <laughs> no, no, no. You're... I don't know that the cows are going to be there, anyways. We'll throw down some uh, some fence gates, and we will begin moving, migrating the uh, the animals over. It's exciting. I'm very excited. All right, it took us an entire day, but we did finally we did finally manage to get. Uh, almost almost all of the animals moved there's one chicken over there that, that's stuck in a fence um but apart from that we have we have our pigs there we have our cows in that we have our cows in this pen over here we have our sheep out here ready for us to start breeding we have our chickens over here so i think rabbits will probably go over here and uh, horses will go over here. That's kind of what we're working with. Now, the next thing to do, and this is going to take a little while, um, is to breed up the sheep. Get a bunch of sheep going. Get some, some red... Get some red and get some white sheep. I mean, we already have white sheep, but get some red sheep going. Um, and then after that, we get to build our barn. It'd be very exciting. Um, but now we can tear down these pens over here. They're, 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 they're useless at this point. Something else will be going there uh, in, a, in a future episode. And our our farm is coming together. I, I'm I'm really I'm really liking it so far. I, I prefer this kind of, especially when you're when you're winging a design, uh, and you're making up kind of on the fly. You know, you're grabbing some dimensions as you go, realizing what you're working with, and just kind of like following those dimensions as it will. Sometimes having to change the land. Um, but this is very improvised building, and and it. You know, I tackle some areas and then I tackle other areas and then I tackle other areas and then it just kind of works itself up and this is where we're at. So we, we will have a barn 
momentarily. After a lot of, after a lot of hay, uh, wheat gets fed to those guys. <laughs> um, one of the things that I have realized about this whole project that's pretty cool is that if this is the front of the barn, like right, right in here, you can't hear any of the animals. So if you're outside of the barn, it's a good measure of like how loud that noise is, you know, like if you're, if you're out here running around, you're not really going to hear the animals, which is nice. Um, uh, as you could see, the sheep are, are, are growing back their wool. I went through and did one shearing of all the adult sheep so far. There's a bunch of, uh, of a bunch of ewes and stuff in there too, but I got 45 wool from one, uh, one shear through. Probably going to do it again. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know how big this barn is going to be, but I'm thinking I want like a solid, I don't know, five stacks of white wool to start, and then a lot more red wool. It's going to be a lot more red wool. Um, but after I get the five stacks of white, then I'll go through and I'll, I'll dye the, I'll dye the sheep red and get started there. It's, it is possible, right? Let me check. All right, so excuse the noise, but... If we die a sheep, yeah, and we can die it again. Yes. Okay. In terms of how we plan on getting all of our red dye really quickly, um, which we, we could get a ton of, um, but we're going to die the sheep just to make the acquisition of it a lot cheaper. Um, but when you need a lot of red wool, which we're not quite there yet, um, taking bone meal to these two tall flowers, this is the awesome thing about these two tall flowers. If you take bone meal and bone meal the two tall flowers, these rose bushes, it literally gives you another rose bush, which means all you really need to do is find one rose bush in your world or one peony or one sunflower or one you know any of the two tall flowers and then you can just bone meal them to get an infinite like it's a re like it doesn't even have a cooldown time like you just you just spam it to get an infinite amount of that color dye so that's really useful because then two tall flowers can also be turned into two dye instead of one remember so that's cool and we'll throw in some iron to cook that up so we have more shears, because our shears are almost gone. We've almost got the five stacks, though, so we're close. We're very close. And just like that, they're changed. But man, their bleeding is very, very loud. Uh, let's let's do some shearing. Also, we caught uh, we caught ourselves a little a little baby zombie who's also a thief. He picked up that block when I broke it, so he's gonna stick around for a while. Wow, okay, that was that was a lot of red wool really quickly. We got that way faster than we got the white wool. Um, and we'll be getting more, I'll be getting more, don't worry. Well, construction is underway. We got a lot of work to do, here we go. So, the majority of the barn is done. We have the walls, we have the shape, we have, uh, we have, a, we have doors, uh, temporary, maybe, doors. We'll see what happens when we get better, um, better trap doors in future updates. Um, but for now, they're working doors. This is going to be roughly a three level, a three level barn, right? Level one will be the level down, down probably here-ish that you, that you'll step up into, um, right about this level, and then I'm thinking another level right at the ceiling of that beam, maybe, and that will give us something to work with up here. So, and we have done it, mission. Success. Look at that big red beauty in the background. <laughs> Here we are. Um, we have the barn finished. Let's check it out. 
So the bar consists of the barn. Sorry, the barn consists of three floors. Um, the first floor here uh, is is a. It's got a little bit of storage, a little bit of um, a little bit of a crafting area. Just just some basic, you know, run and quick and grab what you need kind of thing. It will house more later, but for right now, this is it. And then we go up the stairs. We could go up to the third floor directly, but we're gonna go to the second floor where we have a workstation, a little bit more storage. What gets stored where is gonna be dependent upon uh, how we utilize this barn over time. Um, now, I told you earlier that this was loosely inspired by my fiance's barn, and I actually asked her over to take a look at it and give me some notes. Uh, on how the barn could be different. And so we made some changes. Uh, she said having having food barrels around of like the kind of food that you're gonna feed your animals uh, makes sense. And since we don't have like composters or anything yet, we don't even have barrels. Um, I'm going with this classic old school design here. Well, uh, current school design because I'm in 1.8. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's just a hay bale surrounded by um, uh, some trapdoors. And we've got a couple of them speckled around the place. Um, this contains the ladder that goes up to the third floor on this side. Um, we have some, some boots, because farmers will tell you that they always have a bunch of boots on hand ready to go out and get dirty. Um, so we have some boots on armor stands in here, just ready for us. We still have our animal pens. Um, we have this little setup, which is where we're going to house some of the tools that we're going to use, uh, most frequently. When I get my hands on some leads, that's the primary tool that's going to be in here. My, my fiance said that leads were, um, like you gotta have those. We changed out the big infinite water source for this kind of, this kind of work. Um, it's just a little spigot with some water and I emptied it out a bottle. We can get up on the on the on the on the walls here if we want. Uh, but technically the proper way up is this ladder right here. Now once we get up to the third floor, um, these are my best approximation of animal cages. The kinds of things that my fiance's family have in their upstairs barn are animal cages like like these um some spare lumber just ready to ready to work with to have on hand uh, i do have a workbench up here more cages and this whole this whole get up we we put our little uh our little zombie friend to work he is uh he is working He is working this crane, uh, which is used to, to hoist up um, hay bales. And, and the hay bales are being stored up here. This is the loft area. Um, we can get out to the roof if we need to, but I'm planning on removing this soon. We don't really need to get up here for too much more. I did get up here to, uh, to build a couple of things, to build a skylight. Uh, two skylights actually into the roof here so we have some better lighting down below we'll see we'll see what it looks like without the torches but i don't know if this will be enough um probably going to keep the torches and then this little thing which i've seen on top of roofs before um mostly it's it's for air ventilation and and a little bit of light so um so this is what we've got this is actually going to be really useful later when we um when we learn or when we when we acquire the elytra which is coming in the future we'll be able to land ourselves up here and just just pop on in down there uh, but for now we've got to use the ladders and yeah we have our we have the entirety of our uh, our farm done we added some food bales um out there for the animals to to graze on you know, so they have, they have some food might uh might put some some uh some water sources out there for them too um the only thing that we don't have done as of right now 
is having uh, rafters up there, the supports to the roof. But those will probably come once we have a little bit more in the way of oak wood, like regular oak wood and not birch. But yeah, so this is our barn. And <laughs> I know this is a really long video <laughs> to, to have uh, this be our end our end result, but keep in mind that this is not even our, uh, oh, I'm missing a, I'm missing an X. This is not even our ultimate goal, right? This, this is a multi build, um, series that we're stepping into here. This being just part one, part one of our ultimate goal of our putting our first enchantment area in the basement of the birch house and goal complete because we definitely got more than enough uh more than enough red wool to to work on our basement whoops to work on our basement down below so thank you guys so much for uh for 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 coming with me on this on this trip on this journey um I hope you had a good time watching the the barn and the and the and the pastures come into come into play and ultimately we will be getting to our first enchantment setup um soon so thank you all for for joining me in this episode i will see you in the future <laughs>